So we've talked about the balance sheet and the income statement briefly. Now we're going to talk about two more financial statements, the statement of cash flows and the statement of shareholders equity. And we won't spend much time on those because in general in this class, it's going to be mostly about the balance sheet and the income statement. So first of all, the statement of cash flows. Remember I said before that very importantly, the reason that statements like the income statement, statement of cash flows, statement of shareholders equity exist is not to tell us the final answer. It's to tell us the why of the final answer. Okay. And that is clearly demonstrated in the case of the statement of cash flows. So if you went back to the balance sheet, you would see that at the end of the year, they had a balance of 8.5 billion in cash. At the beginning of the year, they had a balance of 7 billion in cash, which means that cash went up by 1.5 billion. So we already know what the answer is going to be on the statement of cash flows. But the statement of cash flows tells us the why of the 1.5 billion. Where did that 1.5 billion come from? And the statement of cash flows breaks into three pieces, the operating section, the investing section, and the financing section. And so it helps us think about how much was generated in cash inflows from the operations of the firm, how much had to be reinvested back into the firm to keep the firm going, and then how much was left over, for example, to give back to the shareholders or to pay off the debt holders in financing. Or if there wasn't any left over, maybe it's how much additional stock had to be issued or how much additional debt had to be issued to keep the company going. So this is Koch's statement of cash flows and notice that they uh, generated 9.5 billion in cash from operations. What did they do with that 9.5 billion? Well, when we look down here, we see that, you know, a little bit less than half of it was reinvested back into the business. And what were the big reinvestment items? They purchased some short term uh, treasuries. So they sort of bought and sold some short term treasuries, probably some U.S. treasuries, for example, uh, came due. And so they received the cash and they just put those back in again. So those two are basically a wash. But what we see here is they acquired other companies for 2.5 billion. That was primarily the acquisition of Coca-Cola Enterprises. In addition, they put 2.2 billion back into the business in terms of buying property, plants, and equipment, uh, building new concentrate plants, for example. Okay. So notice they have about 5.1 billion left over once they've reinvested in the business. And that 5.1 billion, as we'll see in a minute, is called the free cash. It's the excess cash. It's the cash that Coke is generating above and beyond what it needs to put back into the business to uh, sustain the growth going forward. The final section is the financing section here. So what do they do with that extra cash? Well, basically, they issue some new debt and pay off some debt. So some debt comes due, they pay it off, and they issue some new debt to replenish that. That's just kind of keeping the capital structure in balance, as you'll study in finance class. But the big uses of cash here are paying dividends, first of all, right? So they pay a lot of dividends. They pay $4.1 billion in dividends back to the shareholders. In addition, they repurchase shares for about $3 billion. And as we'll see later, and you'll see in finance class, repurchasing shares is economically equivalent to paying a dividend. So they give about, in this case, $7 billion back to their investors, either by paying them dividends or by repurchasing the shares of the ones who want to sell their shares. Okay. And at the end of the process, what we notice here is that cash went up by $1.5 billion. But notice we already knew that from the balance sheet. This piece is just the statement of cash flows is just telling us that the reason cash went up by 1.5 billion was because they generated 9.5 billion from the operations, 4.4 billion was reinvested back in the company, and that left about 3.5 billion, which was paid out in financing either to the shareholders of the company or paid out to the debt holders of the company. So that's the statement of cash flows. Why does it exist? Well, the income statement measures things. We've already talked about this on what's called an accrual basis, which means that we book revenues when we sell the product, even if we don't collect the cash. And we book expenses when we incur expenses, even if we haven't paid out the cash. And we'll talk about the rules on that uh, in a couple lectures. But basically, a lot of stuff that's going on is non-cash in the firm. And sometimes you care also about the cash position of the firm. 
for at least two reasons. First of all, liquidity, right? So as General Motors was going into bankruptcy, people focused on their statement of cash flows to get a sense for how fast they were burning through cash, for example. So it's useful in thinking about liquidity, especially for firms that are having trouble financially. The second reason, and the reason we'll focus on is, we use it a lot in valuation, at least the concepts of the statement of cash flows. So remember I said that in Coke's case, they had cash from operations of 9.5 billion, cash from investing was 4.4 billion going back in. That, mean that it meant that they had free cash of 5.1 billion. Free cash in the sense that it was cash above and beyond what was needed to keep the business going. And so that's the cash that pays out the dividends, right? So ultimately what we're gonna see when we talk about valuation is there's two ways to value the firm. One way is based on the free cash that comes into the firm, and the other way is based on the cash that's paid out of the firm, for example, in terms of dividends. And in a, over a long enough period of time, those two will add up to the same thing. So when we value the firm, we'll typically use the free cash. And the notion here is a pretty simple notion, right? If you were thinking about buying the coffee shop on Franklin Street, judges, and you were thinking about valuing that going into the future, what you'd want to be thinking about is how much cash is it generating above and beyond the cash that's needed to be reinvested into the business. Because that excess cash, that free cash, is the cash that's going to allow that to have value to you because it's out of that free cash, the cash that's generating above and beyond what needs to be put back into the business um, that can be used to pay out dividends. So if Judges was just generating enough cash from operations to cover its reinvestments but was never clearing any free cash, it wouldn't have any availability to pay out cash uh, to dividend, as, as dividends to its owners. Okay, So that's the statement of cash flows. Um, the last statement is the statement of shareholders' equity, and we have very little to say about this statement, which is why I'm combining it with the statement of cash flows. Investors have said that they also care about why changes occur in other lines on the in the owner's equity section. So we've already talked about net income explaining the change in retained earnings, but the statement of shareholders' equity just goes through in very brief form each section of shareholders' equity and explains why it changed. So the ones that one that we've looked at already here is reinvested earnings or retained earnings. You might say, well, why did they end up with retained earnings of 49.3 billion, given they began the period with retained earnings of 41.5 billion? And of course, the answer is because they earned 11.8 billion in profits and they paid out 4.1 billion in dividends.